Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. Please give us a couple seconds for all of our feeds to sync up and we will begin momentarily. Thank you for joining us. Okay, and we're all synced up. So take it away, Melanie. Thank you, Sophia. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. I'm Melanie Jacobs, a librarian at the Pratt Light Street branch. As you know, Pratt locations are open to the public at 50% capacity with safety protocols in place. Currently, winter hours are in effect. Pratt Library's hours of operation are Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Go to prattlibrary.org for the latest health and safety precautions being taken inside library locations. And during January and February, all Pratt programs are virtual. Let's begin this evening's event. Studies have shown that picking up new hobbies during times of uncertainty is vital to one's mental health. So welcome to the third installment of What Did You Do During the Pandemic? A new interactive lecture series exploring the way people entertained themselves, learned and grew during the isolation of the last two years. A few housekeeping details. We want this to be a fun interactive experience. So please share your comments and questions with us. There will be a Q&A at the end of the program. Let's get started. Joining us this evening is Steve Hazen. Steve is a Baltimore City resident and has worked in commercial banking for over 30 years and currently works remotely for CQ Credit Union. When not sheltering in place, he likes travel, volunteer work, and meeting up with family and friends. Tonight, he will take us along on his COVID journey to a new creative outlet, making sea glass art. Welcome, Steve. Thank you. Thanks so much. So happy to be here, Melanie, and, and appreciate the, the kind introduction and being part of the, uh, the event here. So uh, yeah, our title, What Did I Do During the Pandemic? Sea Glass Art. Uh, I'm going to take you on a little journey. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about pre-pandemic. Uh, things that I used to do, some of which is coming back, some of which is not, and how I kind of fell into it. It wasn't the first thing that I, that I actually uh, ended up doing craft-wise or, 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 or using my hands kind of thing. So I'll just keep going and, and start sharing some, some slides and screen. This, of course, is the uh, uh, website from, from Pratt Library, where most of you probably found out about the event. Um, the piece that's on here, uh, I will talk about that in more detail. Um, uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll spoiler. Uh, that's actually the first piece that, that I did. And I'll talk more about that a little bit later on. So pre-pandemic, um, what were some of the things I liked to do? So I'm, I'm a proud grad of the University of Michigan. Uh, our, our host uh, uh, um, is from the other place that starts with an O. That's our big rival. But uh, we decided to put all that aside for tonight and get along for once. Anyhow, uh, big fan of the University of Michigan. Like I said, a proud grad. And uh, since graduation, way, way back when, decades ago, uh, friends and I would go, go to games every year, uh, usually about two, sometimes three, whatever. And uh, before pandemic, the last time that I did not make it to a, a game was 9-11, uh, uh, was set to go up to Ann Arbor and uh, flights were canceled and we were all you know, kind of afraid to get back on planes for a while. So that's the magnitude of what kept me from going to games. And then of course, pandemic hit. So Michigan football gone, no, no, no more Michigan football. Um, and uh, so, and yeah, the good news is uh, actually this year I did get to go to three games. And so part of life is getting a little bit back to normal. And, and uh, so uh, good news there. And we actually had a decent season. So enough about Michigan. Uh, what else did I do pre-pandemic? Um, in addition to going to Michigan games, travel. Um, my wife and I, we, we love to travel. Um, that's, that's where we would use our vacation and our money. Um, 
and uh, travel domestically, overseas, cruises, you know, but a lot of that's out of the out the window now, right? Travel restrictions. Um, nobody's cruising these days. We, we really miss this stuff. Um, and uh, um, that was a big part of our lives. And certainly pandemic put a put a big dent in that. And um, so, uh, you know, what else do you do? So I'm not going to my football games. I'm not traveling. I'm not taking cruises. What, what are you doing, Steve? Right. Um, the other thing I was doing a fair amount of volunteer work, and, and I'll talk a little bit about this. Uh, first of all, shameless plug for the Red Cross, um, uh, regular blood donor. Um, there's a major shortage going on right now. So if you're able to, please get out there and, and, and give blood. Fortunately, um, that was one of the things I was able to continue during pandemic. They were very good about um, uh, taking donations during pandemic, uh, following really good safety protocols and, and was able to continue that. Um, I serve on the board of Civic Works, which is a, a local nonprofit, uh, primarily geared toward job readiness for young people in, in our community. Uh, on the left there, um, that was the Martin Luther King Day of Service in 2020, so right before pandemic. And uh, I was asked to talk to the gentleman from Channel 45 and talk about the good things at Civic Works. And of course, Civic Works had to, to re-evaluate uh, how they were going to deliver their programs and, and how they were going to do some of their volunteer things. And fortunately, they were able to pivot. And, and while there are not as many opportunities, um, I'm, I'm getting to do more and more of that. Uh, and then other volunteer work through through my workplace, CQ. Uh, and on the right there, you can see my coworkers and, and we're at an event. And, and uh, um, while, while CQ sponsor a lot of events, that's also kind of taken a back seat. And, and uh, uh, we're having to try and figure out different ways to do some of that. So um, a lot of volunteer work and, and not getting to do as much of that um, during pandemic. Some of it's coming back, but uh, we all had to make adjustments. So then uh, I can't do all my travel. I can't do my volunteer work. What can I do? Well, I'm working, right? I'm working, working, working. And as Melanie mentioned, I'm in commercial banking um, and, and, the, and the piece on the left, the image on the left, is kind of what my day looks like. We've been remote since the beginning, so coming up on two years, and uh, that's kind of my day. I got, I have my uh, laptop. I'm on Zoom calls. Um, on the right is, is all the things that we do in banking, um, and and we do a lot of great stuff. Uh, we we do commercial loans, and and you know, one day I might be uh, approving a four million dollar uh, commercial building. Another time I might be involved in you know helping somebody get into their first house. And while that's rewarding. At the end of the day, I don't make anything. It's all it's all paper. It's numbers. It's it's a digital. Um, but it you know at the end of the day, I don't produce anything tangible that I can put my hands on. At best, I can drive by a building and go like, oh, I, I was involved with that, or my team was involved with that. Um, but there's something about building or making something with your hands. And when, when I was a little kid, I used to build the models, the, the ships and the airplanes and stuff. And it was cool because you'd start with a bunch of pieces. And at the end, you had this this thing that, that uh, had transformed. And so uh, that's probably a little bit of how I, I got into this. So that's the day job. And, and, uh, um, and at the beginning, there were three of us adults working in the house, my wife, my, my adult son, uh, and while we have a nice house, you know, we were all on top of each other. Um, and, uh, you know, what, what, what do you do? How do you break the monotony? So um, beaches. My wife and I figured out, or both of us, that, uh, well, we're not going into the offices. We're not going into work. We can do these Zoom calls from anywhere. So why do we have to do it in our house? And so we started going to the beach. And, and on the left, you've got uh, Bethany. Uh, we went several times there. We went Hilton Head a couple of times, Cape May, New Jersey. And the nice thing, we didn't have to get on planes. So, we, you know, you drive down. And we went during pandemic, I think, more times than we've been to the beach in the last 10 years. So um, and there's just something about being on the water. Um, and, and we went all different times a year. I went I went to the beach in the winter for the first time um, in my life. And that was kind of a cool experience. It wasn't very crowded. Um, yeah, it was cold, but uh, nice change of scenery. And uh, so really enjoyed that. And, and from a work standpoint, I mean, you can do the job from anywhere. So they, they don't care if I'm sitting in Hilton Head as long as I'm doing, doing my work and the work's getting done uh, and all that. Well, maybe they do care. Maybe they're a little jealous. But uh, 
anyway, one of the benefits of, of remote working. So you're at the beach and, and, and what, what, what's there to do? So any time of year, the beach combing, and you never know what you're going to find, right? On, on, on the left, you've got a whole bunch of shells, uh, different colors, different shapes, different textures. On the right, there's a bunch of driftwood, there's shells, uh, there's probably some trash, the, 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 some of those items there. Uh, obviously, the, the, if you're lucky, you come across some sea glass. And um, I, I've always loved beach combing. Um, you know, you find fishing lures that have washed up. You find you find coins. I've, I've found money, you know, paper money once or twice. Um, you just never know what you're going to find there. And uh, that's that's part of the fun of this is is the the search, the finding, and the not knowing what, what you're going to get. And so initially, I started playing with driftwood. And here are some of the early pieces. Uh, on the left there is a clock, um, just a piece of driftwood that, that I found somewhere. I think this was actually on the Chesapeake someplace. And um, you can get the clock mechanisms at your local craft store. And you can see there's some sea glass for 12 o'clock, three, six, nine. And up in the top left there is a, is a fishing hook that I found on, on a beach somewhere. And um, you put some hardware on the back and boom, you can hang your clock and, 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 and all good. Um, on the right there, that big red kind of two by four plank, again, found that somewhere on the beach and it was sitting around for a long time. And my wife's like, what are you going to do with that? I don't know. I'm going to do something. Um, and so, you know, use the corks and some of that, uh, blackboard paint and, uh, there's a fishing bobber on top. And then I got some hardware from, from Amazon and made a wine rack out of it. Uh, so I'm doing some things with driftwood incorporating a little bit of glass, uh, made a hat rack or coat rack. Uh, and on the right here, another clock. This is the top of a, a crab bushel that washed up in Cape May. And again, the, the clock mechanisms are easy to find. And almost all of these fishing items um, were from just beach finds. Uh, the crab mallet, obviously not, and the bottle opener. Um, but all, all the fishing pieces are things I've found over the, you know, my, my trips to the beach. And uh, so I made that. The um, and then another piece. This one, yeah, this is actually not driftwood. This is upcycled wood. Um, this is actually a tabletop from a local restaurant. Uh, it was down by the. It was past their dumpster. It was by their dumpster, and I walked past it three, four days in a row, and finally, I'm like, yeah, maybe I can do something with it. So I went inside, talked to the manager, said, uh, "Hey, are you throwing that out? Yeah, can I take it? Sure." So ran home, got my drill separated the, this tabletop from the legs. Um, the, the middle there is a piece of roofing slate. I got that at either second chance or loading dock, a uh, couple bucks and uh, fastened that to the wood. And then uh, hardware from Amazon made a wine rack. And this is now hanging up in, in somebody's living room. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So I'm, I'm working with all this wood and all that. And, and I've kind of came to the realization that while it's cool and I'm building something and, and kind of like it, a couple of obstacles. One, the driftwood in particular, it's, it's very time consuming because to do it right, you've got to clean it, uh, which usually involves scrubbing it with a, with a brush, a, a wire brush. Uh, you should wash it, bleach it, um, maybe let it dry out in the sun a bit, um, and then you should shellac it. And there's a lot of steps there. And I'm just a really impatient person. Uh, the other challenge with this is that um, I don't have a good workspace in, in my house, particularly for larger objects. Um, live here in the city. I don't have a basement in, in a prior home. I had a workbench in the basement. Um, I used to do stained glass. I had all that equipment. And it was nice because I could work on a project for an hour and then leave, just leave it there as is come back the next day, come back next week. I wasn't in anybody's way. It was great. But most of the work I'm doing in this house is at the dining room table. And leaving stuff out there is not a good, um, it's, it's just not good. Let's just put it that way. Um, and so um, that was one of the other reasons why I started to move away from, from the, the wood. And so what, what, what do you do? Well, sea glass. Right. That's the other thing you find. Uh, one of the other things you find down at down at the shore. And it's cool. I mean, it's, it's different colors, different textures. Um, there are some pretty common colors that the clear, 
the green and the brown are the most common colors that you're going to find. Uh, you see some blues, yellow, those are, those are kind of rare. Uh, purple glass is really rare and really cool. Uh, and then also the really dark cobalt blue, um, kind of hard to find, but, uh, part of the fun is just the search. Right. And, um, so, um, uh, you know, I had a bunch of this, um, a lot of it was just kind of in a jar again. What are you going to do with it? Oh, I don't know. I'll do something. And, uh, one, one of these beach trips, I think it was in Cape May, we were in a little shop and they had, uh, all kinds of crafts and different artwork. And, uh, one of the artists, uh, had made some beach scenes out, out of the glass. And I was looking at this stuff and I was going like, oh, you know, I could probably do that. And I have the tools and I have the raw materials. Um, and so I'm examining it. I'm looking at it and, and, and this and that. And, and uh, the, the artist was getting a pretty penny for it, too. Um, so kind of inspired by that, I uh, got home from Cape May and started playing around with some of the stuff. And, and uh, so I'll show you some of the pieces, give you a little bit of the, the, the background, the history of maybe why I did what I did. Uh, where I got some of the ideas and uh, to some of the other aspects uh, of this. So uh, sea glass, right? So first of all, some tools and some of the supplies. And so, you know, good old Elmer's glue, right? We, we all went to school with that. Uh, top left there, that's that's a spool of wire that's, that's dark blue uh, that I had from something I, I had done in the past. Uh, in the middle there, some, some hard uh, cardboard paper stock and all those different shades of blue, kind of like the backdrop to the, the uh, presentation here. Wire cutters, uh, a hemostat. That actually I found on the shore of a beat, uh, of a lake several years ago, and I use that for various um, uh, crafts. It's good for holding things. It's like having an extra hand um, when, when you're doing things. So um, those are some of the tools uh, going along here. Um, <clears throat> different color pens, inks, different, um, um, you know, very fine, very thin markers, thicker markers. Um, and you can begin to see a little bit of some layouts here, like up here in the top left, uh, the beginnings of a jellyfish and, and the wire that I bent to make the legs. Uh, here kind of in the middle, um, these triangular pieces uh, really make really good sails on sailboats. And in, in the middle here, um, you've got the green sail and a small piece of driftwood for the body of the boat. And, um, you know, that that will eventually find its way into into one of these. Uh, there's a piece of broken china. Um, there's some things there. A crab claw. I find I'm not I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet with that. Uh, this plastic bead um, actually came from a, a fishing lure. Um, and then just other shards of glass and, and, and what have you. So there's some of the tools that you use on that. Uh, and as far as, you know, where do you find this, um, you know, on the Chesapeake Bay, Ocean City, really anywhere there's water, even rivers, lakes, uh, anywhere there's water, there's actually, there's shoreline here in Baltimore City. And, and I find things, you know, five, 10 minute walk from my house. And um, so you never know what you're going to find. You, you, you just really don't. And um, so that's, that's some of the, the tools and supplies. Uh, now getting into some of the actual uh, pieces of art. So these ones here on the left, these are two by three inches, just so you, you can get a, an idea of what I'm working with. Uh, those frames, you know, you buy a 10 pack at the, at the craft store. And, uh, you know, so, so what, did, what did I use here? I used some pieces of glass, a uh, piece of coral here on the far left, a, a cork, uh, kind of cut into quarters and some string around that. And so you've got your pier, um, a couple blue pieces, pieces of glass as, as the water, uh, and then a marker to make the birds and the, and the waves. Uh, in the middle there is the, are the birds. And the birds actually were what I first saw there in Cape May. The, I didn't really see, the, the artist didn't really do the boats. Uh, that came later. That, that person focused on the birds. And uh you know, where, where else do you get some of these ideas from, you know, the, uh, uh, Pinterest and, and, and Etsy and, you know, just Google sea glass art and you'll see tons of stuff. And so a little bit of plagiarism, but you know, it's important to, to realize every piece is different, right? I mean, there's one in the middle. If I want to replicate that, yeah, I could do the cork. Yeah. I could do a seashell. I could do two birds, but the glass is going to be different every time. 
different colors, different shapes, and 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 that's kind of part of the fun there. On the far right, um, you know, incorporated a piece of driftwood. Uh, it's kind of hard to see there on the top top right, but uh, in, in the uh, you know, there's a tiny bottle there with some little shards of glass in it with a cork on it. And for the sun, that's that's just a round piece of, of glass. Um, and then the bottom right, you might recognize from the intro, that was the very first piece that I did. Uh, that frame is upcycled from, I think, either Value Village or, or Goodwill. So you don't have to spend the money at the craft stores. I mean, there, there's plenty of frames available, um, you know, it, in your neighborhoods. Again, never know what you're going to find there. That's part of the fun. And so I made this one. And um, I, I was I was thinking, oh, maybe I, I'll put that one up for sale or what have you. And my, my wife said, no, 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 I really like that one. Don't sell it. So that's actually up in our bedroom. And that, that's the very first one of these that, that I did. So that's kind of a special one uh, in our household and, and, uh, and here. Uh, moving on, a couple other things. They're not all, they're not all just uh, seascapes, although that, that, that's kind of a fun thing to do. Um, Again, the, these frames upcycled from the from Goodwill or what have you, and handbag handbags on the left. Uh, the, the middle one is is a piece of broken china, and the two green handbags are, are sea glass. The handles, um, I think, the two on the ends came from a tiny plastic frame that I cut in half, and then the handle in the middle is from a fishing a piece of fishing tackle. So kind of cool there. The one on the right, I call that one girls' night out. So you've got the dress, you've got the cocktail, and you've got the bag. And um, the uh, the the wire hanger was something I learned to make on on YouTube. You just Google make a you know make a hanger out of wire, and sure enough, and it shows you. And, and you do that it takes a little practice. The um, the belt on the dress comes from a, a fishing piece. The handle of the handbag also. Um, yeah, the charms that cheat from one of the from one of the craft stores, but uh, again, uh, upcycled frames and the the cardstock again different color, but uh, uh, I think folks begin to get the idea there. Moving along, um, more seascapes on the right there. The the jellyfish you saw a sneak peek of a different jellyfish on on uh, where I had the tools all laid out, um, but that's. Uh, that, you know, this is just some of the, the pieces that, that that have been done there. And what I do also is I, I keep a log of these. I number them and kind of where, if I can remember where the glass came from, um, I might make a, a little notations of that as well. Here, uh, the, the scene on the left, uh, you might have to use your imagination, but that that's a hammock. And so you're, you're there at the beach between two palm trees. All of the glass on the left palm tree that that was found, gosh, ten minutes from from here in the city, um, it washed up and and uh, um, so uh, place called Fort Howard, which is not too far from here. And then the one on the right is kind of special. Uh, friends of ours, um, uh, the the son got married, and, and the son and and, and now. now bride they live in our neighborhood and we've known we've known the son since he was born and and uh you know we're neighbors and so that piece was one of their wedding presents so piece of driftwood uh some cordage and uh the glass there so the happy couple on his swing and um you know the uh the bride said afterwards she goes i think this is the first piece of original art we've ever owned so um anyway so that's kind of a fun one it's kind of nice and and uh uh, you know, they, they seem to enjoy that. And it was, it was great being part of their, their celebration. So, uh, shout out to Chris and Krista. Um, so anyhow, and where else, what else are we doing here? Sea glass art. Oh, this one. Okay. This, this piece, um, involves my, my family and, uh, my brother lives on the West coast and, uh, we didn't see him through pandemic and Labor Day weekend. He came to visit. And we got to take a family trip with my parents, and we, we, we went to Bethany. We had a wonderful two, three days. And um, I made a couple pieces uh, as a memento of, of the trip. And uh, there was this one for my brother. Uh, that crab there in the middle, that's just a bottle cap that I took some pliers and, and crushed. 
because uh, he's a huge fan of the Maryland blue crabs. Every chance he gets out here, uh, we go and eat them. Uh, birthdays or Christmas, I send him from uh, crab cakes from GNM or Fadley's, wherever. And it, it's great. He enjoys it. And it's an easy gift every year. Um, and I go, but yeah, but you have good seafood out there on the on the uh, West Coast. And he's kind of like, yeah, there's Dungeness crabs. No, not really. So anyway, we had this and, and I made another piece for my parents. And uh, I deliberately did not tell them that these were uh, uh, Steve's specials. And so they're kind of like, oh, where'd you get these? Where'd you get these? And I kind of played coy. And finally, my wife said, just tell them. And so, you know, I, I, I let the cat out of the bag that, oh, no, actually, I made these. And so that was kind of a, a fun revelation. And, and uh, um, you know, so again, fun for me to make and, and really fun when, when you see the enjoyment of, of, of others. And so that's one of the fun, fun pieces um, that, that I really enjoyed making and, and uh, you know, just kind of special bond with my brother and the, and the crabs there. So... Um, that's the sea glass art uh, for family. Um, but not everything's seascape, right? We saw some handbags before, another handbag here. This this frame, is you can't see it here, but this frame is actually a cube. It's a three-dimensional cube. And uh, a friend of mine was at, was at my house. Uh, we were watching football. I, I think he was a little bit in the doghouse with his wife. And uh, she had also kind of helped me with, with some of the uh, creative things. And I said, hey, why don't you why don't you take this and, and give it to Anna and maybe that'll that'll smooth things out a little bit. So uh, uh, actually, I, so I, I've heard it went really well. Um, the uh, and then the piece on the right, you know, just a flower, broken piece of china, uh, some clear glass and a bead. And so really, I mean, there's there's so much you can do with this, and it, it's just kind of fun being creative. I kind of get in the zone. I forget about everything else that's going on, and and really kind of enjoy it. But the uh, the hardest part is finding time, right? Like anything else, finding time to do this stuff. And uh, so there's that. What else? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Another shout out here. So for those who aren't familiar, um, we live near uh, Natty Bow and right across the street from Natty Bow and next door to my house, wonderful restaurant called Of Love and Regret. And um, it's an LGBT woman-owned business, great food, uh, handcrafted cocktails, and if you look in the top picture there, there's about 20 beer taps. And one of the special things there is almost all of those beers are made specifically for them. So you're not going to find those things anywhere else. And uh, the reason for the shout out is they've been kind enough to let me put my things on display in the restaurant. And so like the wine rack that I said was in somebody's living room, they sold it for me and uh, some of the other pieces. And so uh, be remiss if I didn't thank them and give them a shout out. And again, if you're in the neighborhood, get over there and, and, and show them some love. Um, and then kind of finally to, to sort of kind of wrap some of these things up, if you're interested in doing something like this, what, what are some of the resources? And I think you're familiar with most of these, uh, you know, Goodwill, of course, YouTube, uh, you know, Michael's, there's one down the street from me. I, I think for a while there, I was in there one, you know, several times a week. I think they got to know me on a first name basis, and and I may not have been the normal demographic who shops there, so I probably stood out. And they were really kind to me and answered a lot of my dumb questions. Um, Twenty nine ten is a is a local store. Um, a lot of local artisan artisans uh, wares are there. Mine are not yet, uh, so maybe one day. Uh, Second Chance. Second Chance is kind of a cool place if you're not familiar with it. It's over by the stadiums across from the casino. And uh, it's a gigantic warehouse uh, where they have a lot of building supplies. And, uh, you know, need a washer or a dryer? You can get one. Uh, you need hardwood floors? You can get some reclaimed hardwood floors, barn wood, a uh, whole section of ceiling fans, whatever, uh, you know, the frames and, and what have you. So, uh, second chance. The other uh, really interesting part of this, and I've done some volunteer work over there, is about 95% of their employees are um, re-entering society after serving time in, in prison. So, uh, it, you know, they're they're learning about working, uh, you know, a steady paycheck, a living wage, working with others, and uh, it's really a cool place. And so, a great way to support them. And uh, so it, it's uh, anyway, there, there are other resources, but these are the ones that jump out and, and uh, 
were very useful to me uh, in this endeavor. So with that, I'm, I'm going to kind of wrap it up and, and take some Q&A. Um, there's, uh, there's some the comment fields. If you want to populate that and ask some questions, I'm happy to answer those. Uh, if you're interested in contacting me, my email address is up there. Uh, I have obtained the, the domain name Steve's Crafty. It's under construction, which means I haven't done anything with it other than uh, pay some money to GoDaddy. Uh, but the name is there. And the reference there, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the Beastie Boys. And uh, one of their famous songs is She's Crafty. So this is fortunately available. I've got it. But uh, maybe one day when I have some time, I'll build out that, uh, that site. So that's the journey. That's the story. That's what I got. And happy to answer any questions or, or talk more about, about my, uh, my experience there. And just thanks to all the people that joined. I, I see some, some friends, some coworkers, some uh, familiar names and some not familiar names. So just thanks everybody for coming. Well, thank you, Steve. That's, thank you for taking us along on your journey. Uh, you created some amazing things. We have a few questions. We've had some lovely comments. Um, what's your favorite place to collect sea glass? Really any beach, um, you know, any beach. I mean, to, to be fair, uh, the popular beaches, Ocean City and Bethany, uh, Rehoboth are not great places for sea glass uh, because those, those beaches get groomed and they run those big machines that clean the beach every night. Um, but if you go down to like Assateague or some of the more remote places, um, those are tend to be good. Along the Chesapeake Bay, some of the state parks or, or you know, if you know somebody with, with private land, um, you just walk up and down. And uh, um, a lot of times I'll, I'll do double duty. I'll, I'll grab a green trash bag and I'll walk along the beach and I'll pick up some of the crap that's on the beach while I'm looking for the glass. And so then kind of two birds with one stone. But really anywhere that, that, that there's water and sand coming together, um, preferably somewhere warm. So this time of year maybe a little less of that going on, you know, a place like Hilton Head or Florida would be a little more hospitable. But, uh, but again, like I said here, there's shoreline in Baltimore city. And so there's a park, you know, a city park five minutes from my house. And I walk down there almost every day, just because I walk every day and um, you find stuff. Yeah. Um. Someone said, love that you repurposed uh, so many different items to create your art. It looks like you really had fun collecting and creating. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just wish I had more time. You know, that work thing keeps getting in the way. Um, how do you adhere the objects to the background? Um, most, of it's, most, most of it's Elmer's glue. Really, I mean that it's it's that simple, and it and it's pretty it's pretty durable. I mean, certainly if you pick at it, yeah, okay, it, it might come off. And I've had to re-glue things, but uh, that there are stronger glues, and I've you know I've researched, and there, there's other things I could use, but it's worked pretty well. And you know, most of these things, you know, they're hanging on a wall or something, so they're not getting you know handled you know roughly or anything like that. Um, but yeah, did really that simple and that that inexpensive. As someone else commented, each piece is so unique, very inspirational, especially the one uh, that you told the story about your family. That was lovely. Yeah. Thank you. Um, how do you tell the difference between authentic and ar artificial seat glass? Well. For me, I mean, there's the ones I know that I found, and then there's the ones I know, the confession, the stuff that I bought at Michael's. I, I mean, because it, it, it's easy to run out of glass, right? I mean, it's, it, you know, like the one that had the, here, I'll bring it back up. You know, the, the you know, this one here on the left, that's a lot of pieces, right? That, you know, 10, 10 or 12 pieces of glass here. Um, and uh, the, the uh, commercial ones, they're very smooth um, and they, they kind of, while the shapes are all different, the texture and they all kind of look alike um, on that. But there, there are people online that will, you know, they'll comb the beaches, put glass together and, and sell it online. I try, 
I try not to buy it, but sometimes I, I don't have a choice. Um, I think it would be more fun to find it yourself. And- it, it absolutely is. It absolutely. And, and when you buy it, um, it like the stuff at, at, at the particular craft shop, um, there's some really big pieces in there that I, I'm not interested in working with. You know, think things like, you know, like this big, that doesn't fit what I'm trying to do here. So it's, a, it's almost a waste, but you know, you take the good with the bad and, and, uh, and again, that's part of the fun too, is picking through going like, Oh, that's a good piece. Oh, I like that piece. Oh, that'd be, yeah, I can definitely do something with that one. So even just something as mundane as sorting through it, it, you know, again, you're in, you're kind of in the zone, right? It's almost like, uh, one of the other things I do is I do puzzles. So it's kind of like when you're doing puzzles, it's like making the piece fit. Does it look good? Um, the nice thing about this is that there's no right or wrong, you know? So if you don't like it, you just tear it apart and, and start over. Or I've had times where, you know, I'm trying to draw something with the ink and, you know, the, the, the nib stayed too long and now I got a big, big dot in the middle and I got to start all over. So but that's just part of it. It seems like most of uh, your creations are in smaller frames. Yes. What's the largest uh, frame you've ever used? Uh, do you like uh, to use the minuscule? Yeah, the, the, this, like this one here, I think is a five by seven. That that's probably on the larger end. Um, the nice thing about the small ones is, uh, there's only so much you can get in there, right? I mean, I can only I can only jam so many pieces. So the nice thing is you can get in and get out fairly quickly. Um, and so then if, you know, the dining room table needs to be clear, I can, I can get in, get out. Um, so keep yourself out of trouble. Good. Yeah, Good that job. too. That too. So yeah, the five by sevens um, is probably the largest. They're also really easy to find in the, in the, uh, um, you know, the secondhand stores, it's, it's a very common size. So they're very easy to find. I will probably do some larger, maybe like eight by 10. Um, that'll take a little more creativity in the layout and so on, but that's definitely something that I want to do. Do you break your own glass? No, no, I, I, um, so I mentioned that, you know, when you buy it, you get some larger pieces. And so, um, yeah, no, no is the answer. I, I one and done. I took a big piece out. I have a small sledgehammer, you know, a, a hand sledgehammer, and I went out into the alley next to my house, and boom! And I was wearing safety glasses. Um, stuff just went flying all over the place, and it. No, I'm not. I'm. I'm not doing that. Okay. Um, and there, and then look, there's there's other things you can do. I mean, there's YouTube's. You can get these small rock tumblers. Mostly people use them for. Um, um, semi-precious gems and they're like rock tumblers and you put the, you could put the glass in there and run that thing for an hour or two hours. It makes a terrible racket, but you could manufacture your own sea glass. Just take broken glass that you find in the street and, and put it in one of these tumblers. Again, I'm not doing that. Um, okay. I don't think I'd be allowed to. And plus the racket's not, it's not worth it. So for me, for me, but. But it's uh, interesting. That is an available option. It is. It is. I mean, it, it, uh, some of the fun also was just learning about it, you know, going and poking around on, on, on Google and, and um, just seeing what, what's out there. And, and there's some really talented people out there. I mean, there's some things that are well beyond my, my skill set and, and uh, really, really admirable. And, and uh, full disclaimer, the, the, uh, the piece that was up before we got started, that, that actually wasn't mine. That mosaic looking one that was that was there can't take credit for that one so uh um it was again what probably, got used to advertise the program so yes yeah but uh um very nice piece there and, and probably more intricate and probably more time consuming than i would want to spend on a particular project How much my, attention span, my attention span is really short too so you know it's like oh shiny and i'm off doing something else how much time do you usually invest in creating one piece, I, I'm looking for a two-hour block, and I, I, I sometimes can get more than one done, but um, less than that, I feel rushed. And and so if I'm, if I'm going to do it, it's like okay, good. Here's here's two hours that you know I'm by myself. I'm not going to bother anybody else. I can spread everything out. I can make a mess, and as long as it doesn't 
look like there was a mess when when other people get back. It, you know, no blood, no foul. Gotcha. Um, what's the most unique piece of glass you've ever found? Um, Good question. Okay. Yeah, I ha I have some pieces of glass that I've not used in this. Um, I had the opportunity several years ago to go to Australia and I was in Tasmania and I found some really cool shelves and glass. Um, some of the glass was very thick um, and some of the pieces larger than I would use here. So those, that's probably to answer the question that that's what it would be, but uh, not for use in this. And that was several years ago. I mean, I, I you know, picked that up. What was that? 2015 uh, when I was there. But you kept it. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I oh I have a whole um I, I have a, a glass that I got when I was there and I filled it with the shells and other things that I found when I was there. Okay. And um there is yeah, I'm just so much racial. And your art evokes emotions, and it seems like you've titled each piece. Mm, not not every piece. I mean, I, like, like, okay, like this one, I'll just say like, like the, the note that I'll make is, you know, blue jellyfish, uh, blue wire, um, because if I, if I do sell it, I do want a record of, you know, of, of, of what it was. And, um, you know, I mean, the wire is commercially purchased. Um, and that particular piece of glass, I think was also probably a cheat was probably a purchase piece. Um, you know, this one here, with the bird, it'll just say, you know, birdscape. This one will say, you know, uh, sailboat with with pier. And um, you know, if I remember where a particular piece of glass came from, it, I'll, I'll say that. Um, you know, the girls' night out. The uh, this one, I this one I didn't name. The, this one here. I mean, it's just handbag. <laughs> you know, handbag with with. Uh, uh, you know, red, reddish uh, backdrop, and and you know, as, as plain and simple as that. So nothing, nothing as interesting as you know the couple on the swing, or or Chris and Krista, or or something where it's more personalized. This one on the right here, you know, flower, <laughs> flower, pot. Pot, broken china pot, you know, clear glass, uh, burgundy, uh, purple uh, background. So some more more elaborate than others. How many pieces total have you created when you count them all up in your catalog? Mm. For the, for the driftwood pieces, probably about 10 and for the sea glass art, maybe 25. Okay. And, and, and again, as I mentioned, you know, time is becoming a thing. So as I've been able to start traveling again, as I've been able to, to do more volunteer work again, as I've been going to my Michigan games, go blue Melanie. Um, you know, that that's time that I'm not doing this, but yeah, it's so probably about 25 pieces of, of the sea glass art. Okay. And then you, as you said, you have um, a lot of them on display at love and regret right now. Uh, I need to, I need to replenish some of it. So there's probably not a lot right, right now. There's a few pieces, but I, I need to get back with them and, and, uh, uh, um, replenish. I also have to make some more. Um, so, and then the other, the other thing, um, that, that I've learned through this is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably less than five years away from retirement. So this might be something to do during retirement and, um, definitely, you know, would like to be somewhere warmer than here, which could kind of take, you know, near a beach. So climate that, that change, you can get your yeah. wish. Hey, I'll take it. I'll take if I don't have to move, I'll take it. But uh, you know, days like today, eh, you know. But but anyway, so th you know, this is something I can occupy myself, um, and and certainly if I you know when, when I have more time, uh, can can probably crank some more of these out. But uh, right now, it's just a fun thing to do, and and uh, um, and it helps sort of keep you keep... sane. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have a question. Um, Comment first. Love how you get the perspectives, uh, uh, even in the very small frames. And if I have sea glass I've collected and want to pass it on to you, how can I do that? Are you accepting well, would, sea glass? 
I would absolutely love that. And if you contact me at, at this email address here, I, I, I'll make further arrangements. Uh, if you're local, I'll come get it. If you're further away and want to mail it to me, we'll, we'll, we'll work something out on that. But I'll, I'll take it, please. So if well, you mentioned you like to travel. I'm sorry, say that again? You had mentioned that you like to travel. I do. I do. So, you know, so if you, so if you live somewhere, you know, enticing, warm. maybe I'll just come and get it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Especially this time of year. If you live somewhere warm, I'll, I'll, I'll come and get the sea glass. Um, okay. Um, one other thing you've, it looks like you've always been crafty from the stories that you shared and you're a man of many talents, interests and hobbies from beer connoisseur to visiting all of the U.S. national state parks. Uh, what's next? I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. Um, you know, some something will you know distract me, and and uh, we'll do that. I mean, I still have I still have some parks I need to get to, um, and and some that I would like to revisit. Um, and and uh, now I can't take stuff out of the national parks. You know that, that they they kind of frown upon that. So, um, yeah, so that, that's not really, but, uh, yeah, probably more, more of this, uh, um, just where things where I can do things with my hands, you know, that, that, that's very rewarding. An, an excellent creative outlet. So unfortunately we are out of time. Thank you so much, Steve, for sharing your sea glass hobby with us tonight. It, it was truly fascinating and inspiring. Um, I know the next time I go to a beach, I will look more carefully through everything on the ground to see what jumps out at me. So um, cool. thank you for the inspiration. As mentioned previously, oh, and thank you audience. How could I forget? Thank yeah. you audience for joining us. We appreciate you tuning in today. And as mentioned previously, all Pratt programs are currently virtual. So go to prattlibrary.org and find out about upcoming events. And check the Pratt website for the different take and make craft kits for all age levels being offered at Pratt locations. All of the supplies are included. You just go to the Pratt location offering the take and make and pick up a bag. So fun for everyone. And thank you again, Steve. Everyone stay safe, stay well, and enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>